My name is Alex Julian. I'm a visual artist and I work in lots of different kinds of media. So I work in my studio making sculpture and drawings, often from found objects or poor materials. But I also do a lot of collaborative work. Um, for example, I might make work that involves up to 350 people. Um, and many of those will often be the public. I'm Kath McGuire. I'm a sociologist and I work at the University of Exeter's European Centre for the Environment and Human Health in Truro. The idea came from the group that they would really like to work with an artist to explore more creative ways of, of um, telling their stories or looking at their findings or um, maybe some kind of visual expression of, of, of this work. So the project I'm working on with Arts and Culture is about looking at how we experience the environment and how that benefits our well-being and health. First and foremost, coming back to this idea of working with the public, I need to hear what people's experiences are of being in those environments, how they connect to them emotionally, how they connect to them just physically or experientially, and how they perceive that connection between their own well-being and their experience of that environment or their connections to it, possibly through memory or family or in a hundred other kinds of ways. The group that I'm with work not just face to face, we work probably 50% of the time via the internet. So we're able to include the members of the public that aren't actually physically with us. So Alex has got quite a challenge with us because she's going to need to engage with us in the ways that we engage with each other, which we know are effective, um, but somehow her artistic talents are going to be brought into that. I'm looking forward to it. It's about getting out of the sort of main lanes of, of communication that we get stuck in and being able to cross over some of those barriers and see things from different perspectives. So conversation is a huge part of what's going to happen. It may not be face to face, but I think one of the ways I will work is by throwing out questions, puzzles, little triggers. They might be visual triggers or they might be an instruction to ask somebody to go and do something for me and just to see what comes back. Uh, yes, the, the lockdown has affected my fellowship um, in so many ways. And I think what was interesting about this fellowship is that it was focused on the idea of water, bodies of water, how when we're by bodies of water, whether that's a puddle, a pond, a fountain, a river, a stream, the sea, it makes us feel a particular way. So I work a lot with objects and um, I like to work with uh, juxtaposition of objects against an idea or a place. Sometimes it's to do with putting one thing against another thing where they look as though they don't really belong together. But we start through conversation to try and find threads or try and find some meaning there. So I wanted to create a pack of cards, 50 cards. The idea is to work with them quite randomly. So perhaps to take a card at random and just to take a moment to look at it and think about it in the context of water or even take it to a place with water if that's possible and to think you know are there any connections here so for example I happen to have a card that has a pattern on it mm -hmm. um, it's it's a photo of terracotta tiles but the first thing that strikes me is the pattern so that immediately gives me a word it gives me a hook I can go to water or I can think about water and think about pattern. And I've deliberately used a lot of images that have nothing to do with water at all. And this again is the idea to take, take us away from just simply saying, <clears throat> water makes me feel a particular way or it makes me have a particular kind of memory, but it takes me off in a different direction. So for example, here I have one of um, scissors so I would hope someone might look at the scissors and think, well, scissors cut, scissors are sharp. Scissors can be dangerous, but they can also be functional. So that already gives me a whole array of thoughts and words 
that I can start to think about. They're called conversation cards because it's just a way of starting a conversation and it's taken from the idea of the 18th century idea of having an object or a painting that sits in one's living room and uh, is a conversation starter.